Okay, now that we have the camshaft dialed in, we're going to install all the lifters. And um, what we're going to do is check for lifter rotation uh, while the cam is spinning. So basically, we're going to mark the lifters in place with a little sharpie. And I also marked the block at the top with a witness mark. So we're going to roll the engine over. We should see all of these lifters uh, rotating the bores. We want to check every one of them, make sure that they do rotate. doesn't really matter what direction that they rotate in, just as long as they do. So. And the camera's hitting. So we did two rotations of the engine and you can see that the lifter did turn in its bore and it looks like all the rest of them have moved also. So we're all set with the lifter rotation test. Okay, we're going to do the final installation of the camshaft. I've got the cam lifter lobes uh, coated with uh, the ARP assembly lube that came with the cam from Hughes. I'm going to install this for the final time. I'm also using ultra slick assembly lubricant on just the journal bearing or on the bearing journals by themselves. I also put some put some in the uh, bearings in the block too. So we've got plenty plenty of lube in there. So I'll just let it sit on a bearing. Put some more lube on there. Also going to put a little bit of assembly lube right on the cam for the fuel pump. I don't have a cam installation tool, but I've always found that using just the actual camshaft gear helps just hold the end of the cam up so you can get it into that last bearing. set in place and now we can get the timing chain assembled to the crank now we're going to install the camshaft timing chain and the gear in the same location it was when we took it apart that way it's still at zero or at uh, the 102 center line.
just going to snug these down for now. I'm going to back them off now that I know that the cam gear is where it needs to be. Double check our dots are lined up where it was and I marked them. We'll take these back out and throw some Loctite on them as well as having the lock washers on it. Okay, we're going to install the fuel pump while we're at it. Going to put a dab of assembly lube right on the push rod uh, pivot point. Call it old-fashioned or what you will. I'm using aviation sealant on the gasket surface as long as well as the gasket, and I have had n never had any leaks when I've done that. So push the push rod up. Get the fuel pump in there. Get one bolt. Torque spec on the fuel pump is 30 foot pounds. So we're going to put the timing chain cover on. Got the gasket surface clean and also some of the aviation sealant on it. So I'm going to lay the gasket on the block. Let it get into that aviation sealant. We'll grab the cover. I'll put our slinger on it this time too. And a little bit of assembly loop on the chain. We'll get our cover with our new seal installed. I already sandblasted and primed this cover. And I also put some of the sealant on the cover itself. Get that started. I'm not using any sealant on these bolts as they don't go in any oil passages or into the lock. There's actually a torque spec of 15 foot-pounds for the timing chain cover, so we're just going to throw it at 15 and call it a day. <laughs> 